if a story really happened to me. It happened a long time ago. I was just a kid. When my family and I lived in a small village, where we were only two streets, a church, a small river, and a forest nearby, it took an hour to ride to the nearest settlement with a post office and a store. A godforsaken village what I loved very much. I don't remember my childhood well, but with days forever etched into my memory, the street my strongly believing relatives. I did not go to church, for which I constantly hear threats from my grandmother. What demons would did save me? What I will not get to heaven? What evil spirits would ring similar crosses, which I only mock it? Where it was some kind of church holiday what day? With streets very deserted, we enter small population was a church service. I as I often did, did not wait for the next grandmother's threats and run off into the forest to pick berries. I don't know how much time possibly I was wandering throughout the forest, but my basket remained empty. I am completely already disbanded. I was upset when I saw the mushroom picket. He asked me why were no smile on my face, to which I showed him an empty basket. Is it a problem? Where is a wall glade of strawberries? Not far away. Follow me, I'll show you. Woman said and slapped it, me on time shoulder. We will get it a bite. And I saw it seem it, a hundred bushes bending. To the ground under we wait for red berries. I couldn't believe me yes, as I was almost sure that I had already passed here today. Potting us at me doubts. I begin to feel the basket in my berries going further into the forest at some point. I suddenly realized that I was lost. It was getting dark. And suddenly I was very scared. I turned my head in the direction of the mushroom picket. And horror seized me, not giving me the opportunity to move. I saw who was seeking out from under the coat. Closing my ears, I begin to remember the prayers I have ever had. Something crunched around me, where there was a terrible roar. It seemed to last forever. When everything went quiet, I called in for a long time. I called and bring myself to open my ears for a long time. But when I did, I saw it where it was no one next to me. Nothing seemed to have happened, only my basket was still empty. In the evening I went out to the village. Let's worry on in every house. Women were crying, and men were running to the river. As my father told me later, I was gone for more than a day and everyone thought I had drawn it. I was severely punished, but to the joy of my mother and grandmother, I did not miss a single to rise in the church anymore. After waking up with a jolt, we get late and wait a few seconds longer, reaching over to switch on her bedside lamp. She tried to remember exactly what had stolen her sweet slumber away. When she called in the brunette swing, her legs over the side of the bed and heaved herself up, checking with time on her phone. She snorted when she saw it was midnight with watching her, knowing what sleep would only await her. She left her bedroom for the kitchen, a good cup of coffee in her mind. As she passed by her front door, a chill spread like liquid fire down her spine. It's only winter, she told herself, focusing again on the coffee plan. Measuring out scoops of water and preparing her cupcake her a cupid. But as the dog liquid boiled, she had nothing left to keep her mind from wandering off. The chill returned, and she couldn't help but glance behind her to the front door. It stood very innocently an ouch, just like always. The deadbolt was still in place and she called, so nothing amiss with it. Turning back to her coffee, she did her best to forget about the feeling. With her cup in hand, she started back towards her bedroom. As she walked by the front door, it had said what a quick glance out of a big hole world helped calm her restless mind. With chill worsen it, with each step she took towards the door and forced her away from the safety and warmth of her blankets. She pressed her empty hand against the cold. 
Metal Darren took a deep breath before leading her into a peep hole. At first, she called only Saninki. Blackness and somehow seemed to swirl in itself. When she blinked in surprise, the void melted away. She wished it hadn't in its place. Where stood what she called only. Quest was also a man. The limbs were long and inhumanely awkward, with bulky joints branching of winter, several arms. Not unlike the branches of a tree, the creature was dragging in a black sight. Somehow making the thing more nightmarish to hear. The icing on the proverbial cake. However, was with bastard, as we hellish thing's face. It was a touch her mind, blurred the ghastly visage, to spare itself for her snug and horror. She showed herself away from the door with the hand still pressed against it. With scalding mug of coffee fill, the liquid burning her bar legs. The liquid burning her bar legs as she peeled backwards. And tried to gravel away from the door. She knew somehow where her mind hadn't been playing tricks on her. As she grab walked away from the door, she watched as tendrils as black as we void. She first saw snake around Troach with cracks. The girl was trapped between the instinct to fear and the gut feeling. Do not turn her back on the door. When the door jolted, we argued to flee, overcome her, and she slipped in the burning liquid as she tried to make it back to her room. She knew deep down why she was trapping herself in the corner, but she had to get away from the door. The girl was halfway down the hallway when she heard the previously locked door creak open. She screamed and slipped into a well, cracking her, cracking her chin on it and stunning her afterward where it was only blackness. Nicole? A warm male voice snapped the woman out of a trance. As she turned around, she was met by one of her sister's doctors. She nodded, not sure if she should say anything. A even if she could find her, a voice if she did have something to say. That morning she had gotten an argument, phone call from with hospital. Sighing with her sister, Lindsay was weary, before we had even let her see her. The doctors had pulled her off to the side and insisted what we tell to her about what might have happened. Crisis like self-inflicted and assault had been thrown around and Nicole left him unreal. She still hadn't fully understood what we had been. She still hadn't fully understood what we had been saying until she saw Lindsay with her own ears. Her little sister had a bandage wrapped around her head, covering both of her ears as well as her ears. We said it was to keep her now dead in its eyes from drying out and to try to keep infection out of the wounds Lindsay had made to her ears. The doctors had greased wet at her, she or someone else had jammed a pencil into them to keep her off balance or to defend herself against something. Where it was the mix of first and second degree bonds on her hands, legs and feet. From where was a summit to be a coffee, an egg bores found. Slipped all over the entry to her. To be with coffee here, Nightboards found sleeping all over the entry to her apartment. As Nicole walked into her sister's hospital room the first time, she doubted she had speed with silhouette of a man in the window. What she knew was impossible. Her sister's room was only tried, story of the hospital.